In this video, I'm going to be unboxing and reviewing the brand new Vanquish VS410 Portal Edition RTR. This is a big step for the channel as we continue to broaden our horizons in the larger scales. We're doing that in a big way today with this Vanquish RTR. The VS410 is loaded with features, purpose-built, precision-made, and I'm super excited to get my hands on it. And this special edition with the Falcon livery and the portal axles in RTR format is super exciting. So let's dig into this. Let's open the box, check out the truck, see what comes with it, and then we're going to run it. So let's get into it. All right, let's open this beautiful thing. So I've already opened it a little bit. I got into it. The packaging on this is beautiful. Great illustrations of the features and the key components of it. It's a very nice box. Even the tape on it is super high quality. There we go. Small box for a big truck. Here we go. There it is. Oh, the livery on this is so beautiful. It's so much better in person than what I was expecting. The colors on it are so sharp. Let's check out what else we got in the box before we get into the rig here. So here we've got a bag of spare parts. A lot of spare parts, actually. That's nice. Here's the transmitter. This is a 2.4 gigahertz transmitter, four channel. Comes apart, two pieces. And here's where you put the batteries. Does not come with batteries. Inside the cardboard supports here, they've also put some components. Owner's manual. Okay, I'll be opening that up and reading that in just a minute. So we got a bunch of stickers. In one of these spare parts bags, we've got the linkage for our dig and overdrive functions. So I'm gonna be hooking that up soon, but I'll have to dig through and see where that is. Let's check out the rig now. All right, man, this thing is beautiful. Now for one of the best parts here, this is so satisfying. Peeling the plastic off, there it is, that beautiful paint, that livery. It is so gorgeous in person. The exterior on this, I really like that they put the bed sides on this one. In the back is the cage going across. I did see this little sticker in the back here. There's a little guy, stick man, with his RC truck. But that was a nice touch. Very cool. So I'm actually revisiting this video after running this thing for a significant amount of time today. I took it out for about three hours at Fort Phoenix, which is appropriately named, but had an absolute blast out there. And I felt it was important to get some runtime on it. Now I feel like I'm in a better place to articulate how some of these features really function, why they're important, and how they translate into real-world performance. Now, there's also a ton of great videos out on the previous RTR that came out earlier this year. Harley Designs, Scale Builders Guild, RC Driver, all those guys have done great deep dives into the RTR. So I'm just going to hit some of the key features here, and along the way, I will point out some of the key differences between the Special Edition model here and the previous RTR. So let's jump in and kick this off with the exterior. Most notably is the Falcon livery on this beautiful body. This is part of the special edition. You get this glorious paint scheme here with this vibrant green and the blue and the Falcon stickers on it just looks fantastic. This really looks so much better in person and seeing it out in the sunlight, it is just glorious. In addition to the special livery, you also get the bedsides here. The previous RTR just came with the cab and did not include the bedsides. It's difficult to see, but there's also a full interior in this one. That's also exclusive to this model as well. The interior is pretty detailed. It's got a stickered up dash with gauge clusters. The center console has switches. It's got a gear shifter. Front and back, we've got high clearance bumpers. You can see in the front, you've got this very stubby, no nonsense bumper. In the back, there's hardly any bumper at all that you can see, but you can look underneath here and you can see that it's angled. To really help increase your approach and departure angles. Same thing with the front, it's just got this nice angle on it and this works really well in the real world. Tires and wheels on this thing, so we've got the 1.9 inch Incision KMC KM233 beadlock wheels. These are officially licensed by KMC, they look great on here. These are wrapped in 4.65 inch Falcon Wild Peak tires in the red compound. Very sticky, very very grippy. To take the body off, we've got three pins that you pull out. We've got two in the back and one in the front. With the pins out of the rear, you can operate this just on kind of a hinge. 
if you want to just access your battery, turn the rig on and off, you can easily do that. The body itself fits on here very, very well. There's no fussiness or frustration getting the body to sit. Once it's on there, it's solid and it's very easy to do so. To completely remove the body, you take out the front pin and you push through this piece here. And once that is out, you can pop the entire body off very easily. With the body off, now we can see where the real magic is with this rig, starting with the VS410 chassis. This is a steel C-channel design, very, very strong, super rigid. It also does a great job of shifting and keeping the weight up front and down low, but also offers a ton of clearance underneath it. Surrounding the chassis itself here, we have the Phoenix body molded rock sliders here. We've got molded inner fender liners with the option to add rock lights, very easy. We've got these components you can just pop right off and add the rock lights. We've got a scale radiator here with fans in the back. In the rear here over the cross bracing, we've got a fuel tank. Suspension on this is running the Big Bore 8mm S8E shocks. Now these are slightly different than the previous RTR in that they are shorter. These are running 80mm shocks as opposed to 90. And the reason they did that is because with the portal model, when you add portals, you know, you raise your chassis up. So they went with a shorter shock to bring the ride height back down to maintain the ride height from the straight axle version. Underneath here, we've got heavy duty stainless steel links. These things are beefy. The diameter on these, I don't know what the exact diameter is, but they are big and rugged links. That carries through to the steering linkage as well. And the panhard bar, which is also mounted to a machined aluminum panhard mount. We've got ISD 10 drive shafts. Most notably underneath this thing, we got to talk about the axles. So this is running the F10 portal axles. These are the composite versions, but still very strong. I mean, just look at the trussing on these axles here. The portal axles just give you so much ground clearance. Look at the clearance underneath this thing, just incredible. This has the offset pumpkin in the front, centered in the rear. Inside the portal axles and on the portals themselves, you've got machined portal gears. Inside the axles, we've got Machined ring and pinion gears with a chromoly six bolt spool at each end. We've got universal style front axles, giving this thing an impressive 47 degrees of steering. Look at that thing, huge steering angle on it. And it's also got built in bump stops for your steering here. Steering is brought about by Vanquish's metal geared servo. This is the VS1 model capable of up to 200 ounces of torque. Electronics on this thing, so we are running the VE1 ESC. This is the Vanquish version of the Hobbywing 1060. Offers very impressive, smooth control, capable of up to 3S. That's mated to the VR1 receiver, which is paired to the 2.4 gigahertz transmitter, which we'll look at in just a minute. The whole electronics combo really makes for a great driving experience with tons of control. Now let's get into the drivetrain of this thing. So this has the VFD twin transmission, which is a very cool piece of hardware. It's positioned in a way that sets the motor underneath the transmission so the transmission is very far forward in the chassis and then the motor is underneath it so you get a great combination of low center of gravity and forward bias based on this setup some of the coolest features of the transmission is that it has a selectable overdrive so it's got six and a half percent and then you can select either manually or with your transmitter if you have the servos hooked up a 46 percent overdrive in this it also has a three position dig setup also operated by the transmitter if you have it hooked up. Now DIG, if you're not familiar with that, locks your rear wheels, keeps your front wheels spinning so that you can make extremely tight turns or lock the rear wheels for a controlled descent. I mentioned the motor, it's difficult to see under there, but this is the Vanquish VM1 35 turn brushed motor. The whole combination just works incredibly well and really translate into excellent real world performance. This is a precision built purpose focused chassis and there are so many more details that i could get into the thought and the engineering that have gone into this setup is very impressive let's take a quick look at the transmitter here this is your vt1 transmitter like i said it's a four channel 2.4 gigahertz design has a really nice digital display here great ergonomics small compact design fits easily in the hand easy operation with one hand Channel 3 and channel 4 are multi-position switches, with channel 4 being a three-position switch here on the side. I currently have this hooked up to my DIG. Channel 3 is a two-position switch. Just operate by pushing the button. I have this hooked up to my overdrive functions. The transmitter is very capable. You can scroll through 
to a variety of different screens. It has all of your endpoints and your trim for all of your channels. Also able to store 15 models on this. Let's come around here and I'll show you the overdrive and the dig hookup that I've done. So this is my overdrive servo. You can run standard or low profile servos on here. I've got two standard size servos. They fit no problem. I'm running these EcoPower servos from A Main Hobbies. Vanquish provides the kit to do this. It has the same heavy duty stainless steel links for both the overdrive and the dig. One thing that you will have to do is when you hook your servo up, you will have to go through and set your endpoints for each direction of the channel. So to do that, you just go in, you're going to hit select, you're going to go to the second menu here, and then you're going to scroll through your channels, go to channel three, and this is where you can set your endpoints with the plus and the negative here. You're going to do the same thing for your dig function, which is run by this servo attached to your battery tray. It's a little difficult to see because it's underneath behind your upper and lower links, but that's the servo that does the dig. And again, it's got the stainless steel link that runs to the transmission. So if I set channel three and hit again, that should give me my 46%. Same thing with the dig. This is dig disengaged. And all the way locks the rear wheels. Now in hindsight, I almost wonder if I should have gone with channel four for the overdrive because there is a function to do a freewheel option, which I think, I'm not positive, is in the center here. So if I did a three position in the middle would be a freewheel, which essentially is two wheel drive. It disconnects the front tires. I don't know why you really want that, but it is an option. So I might play around with that, but I'm really happy with how this is set up right now. I will add too that before you do anything, you do need to back out some of these little grub screws here because it comes locked in the 6.5% overdrive. You just back out those screws there. And that way, if you wanted to shift this manually, you could just back out that screw, push the lever back, lock it into place with the screw again, and then you'd have your overdrive. Same thing with the dig functionality. So here we are on the scale. Let's check out our results here. So in stock form with no battery, we've got 56% front, 44% rear bias. Total weight's 2,900 grams. I'll translate that into pounds. So that's enough talking about it. Let's go hit the rocks. Now I mentioned that I took this out to Fort Phoenix in Fairhaven, Massachusetts earlier today, which is crawler heaven here in New England. The thing did amazing. So why don't we go check out that run footage now, and then I'll circle back to you with my final thoughts. We're out here with the Vanquish Portal RTR, having a great time. We're at Fort Phoenix in Fairhaven, Massachusetts, crawler heaven here in the Northeast. I've been running the Phoenix for about an hour now, and it's just getting better and better and better. I'm learning more and more how to use the selectable overdrive and the dig functions. And as the tires wear in as well, it's just getting incredibly good. Initially, I was a little disappointed because some of the lines that my Gladiator can do, this wasn't able to do. But again, after the tires seem to warm up and shed that 
initial coating, the thing's sticking like glue and the lines that it's able to pull off in bone stock form is mighty impressive. The extra ground clearance from the portals does a great job, especially in situations like that, just getting over these undulating, jagged, rocky sections. The overdrive here really helps a lot, especially a lot of these uphills. See, I have it engaged right now. I'm trying to use it sparingly because I know it puts a lot of stress on the motor. But it comes in really handy with these uphills and that tight turning radius that it generates too. Suspension action is excellent. It feels super balanced. It's very planted. The 35 turn motor has plenty of power. If you can't slow crawl it, which it slow crawls very well, if you can tell, you can always just bump it and it will go. The bodywork and the coloring just look glorious out in the sun. It just is so beautiful looking. You do this line here. use the dig function there that was excellent just so amazing what this thing can do in rtr format it's just incredible it's a tough one here Let's see if i can stick it i'm getting some fold on the tires these tires are very soft and they do tend to roll over so i would like to put an insert in these or some sort of foam to stabilize that a little bit i'm rolling hard on that tire right there i don't want to flip my new beautiful truck here I think it's going to pull it off. <laughs> so close. All right. A little help there. Still stuck pretty good. The chassis itself, very rigid, hardly any flex. There's little to no torque twist in this thing whatsoever. It just feels very refined, very polished. And again, I keep coming back to the fact that it's so hard to believe that this is an RTR. It's pretty much crushing every line that I put in it with the exception of a few very crazy ones. So for my first experience with a Vanquish, I think I picked a good one. I'm really happy with this thing. Very impressed. It's converted me, that's for sure. Look at this climb, holy cow. So I can't leave here without trying the hardest line in the whole park. This is the super gnarly uphill section that's kind of the staple of Fort Phoenix. So let's give it a shot with the bone stock RTR. Got my overdrive engaged. I'm gonna try to do this one-handed also. First shot in the RTR format. Man, what a beast this thing is. Super impressed with this. All right, that was a perfect way to send it off. Oh, the Vanquish. I am converted, my friends. This rig is mighty impressive for an RTR. I had so much fun with it, if you couldn't tell. Try to break this down, give you my thoughts objectively here. So initially, I gotta say, I was kind of disappointed. I was out on the rocks, hitting some of the lines that I was familiar with with my SCX-10 Gladiator, and it wasn't doing it. It was having a really hard time, actually, in some of the lines that I was putting it up against, and I kind of was thinking, is this it? You know, what's all the hype about? But as the morning went on, it got better and better and better. And I don't know if it was me 
adjusting my driving style, becoming more acclimated to it, or if it was the tires wearing in, the chassis getting sorted out as it was getting broken in. I'm kind of feeling like it was the latter because once that kind of slippery coating wore off on the tires, man, this thing started gripping like crazy. And a little bit of the former too, I guess, because once I started to figure out how to adequately use the overdrive and the dig function too, started to unlock incredible amounts of performance with this thing. And at the end of the day, it was crushing lines that I was used to hitting with the Gladiator and some that I could not hit with the Gladiator in just bone stock format here. Being out on the rocks and putting this thing through its paces, it really started to make sense. All the key features that I went over earlier really translated into real world performance and not just words on a page somewhere. Not only was this thing a blast out on the rocks, it was also quite a conversation starter. I ran into a bunch of people out running their rigs at Fort Phoenix and we had some really good conversation about the Phoenix here. It was funny when one of them said, try the super hard line. There's one line at Fort Phoenix that is almost straight up super technical line. And I said, okay. And he said, no, 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 don't do it. I don't want you to scratch up the body. But this thing just ripped right up that line like it was nothing. No problem whatsoever. And the dude's jaw just about dropped. It was so good. Mine did too, by the way. But overall, I am incredibly impressed with the Phoenix Portal RTR. I'm super happy with this purchase. I was skeptical at first of spending the money on this thing, but now I can really say that it's got so much value packed into this chassis. It is just really amazing what this thing can do in RTR format. But let me know your thoughts down below. What do you think of the VS410 Portal Edition RTR? Is it worth the hype? What do you think? And as always, I appreciate you guys. Thanks so much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you haven't done so, and I will see you in the next video.